What's up, everyone? Welcome back. This is the season 12 premiere. I'm your host, Alex Funderburg, and we're finally back from break. I'm so excited for this semester and everything we have planned for you guys. Um, and today, we're going to start off with some NFL talk and some NBA talk. We're going to talk uh, the AFC and NFC games this week and, you know, the Bills. And hey, Chad Henney, how about him? Um, but and then for the NBA, we're going to talk about some rookies, um, the COVID issues going on. But we have a great show for you. Stay tuned and, and keep watching. Things gonna change when I really hit the field. Undefeated chance, man, you know what's the deal. Trying to find a kid, I'm in a field doing drills. Boy, you just a sucker, you ain't never keep it real. Three rings in my hand, I'm a warrior to the max. When I hang it up, they gon' have to give me plaques. Step up in the building and I only bring the facts. When I make a highlight, they gon' replay, run it back, okay? Always locked in, now I don't got time to lack. Saying he the best, he could take a lap. Batted 1,000 when you check the stats. Boy, is you ready? You ain't got to ask. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Hitting the Field. I am your host for the semester, Alex Funderburg, and we have a great, great show for you today. I'm joined by John Alfano and Sam Sullivan. Uh, guys, how are you doing, John? Very good, especially after the Bucks won last night. <laughs> Sam, how about you? How are you? Doing great. Glad to be talking about some NFL football in 2021. So let's get to it. All right. So we're going to jump right in with uh, the Rams-Ravens game first. I mean, the Bills came out. The Bills won 17-3. It was a defensive battle. We saw Lamar Jackson get hurt. Um, what, John, what did the Bills defense do to slow down the high-powered Ravens run game? They, they focused in on the run. They forced Lamar to beat them with the air and he couldn't and that pick six in the end zone really turned out to be at the turning point because the Ravens outgained the Bills by over 100 yards had I think 10 more minutes of time possession and that uh, pick six and it crumpling down and of course Lamar Jackson unfortunately got hurt prayers up to him <laughs> yeah no and like you said it was kind of the pick six that turned everything Sam we saw the Bills often struggle I mean they only had one touchdown uh, is that cause for concern going into the AFC championship game? Um, I don't necessarily think so, because I don't think they needed to do that much against this team. I really think that the Bills defense just showed up big time. I mean, they, they held they held Lamar under 200 yards total. And, you know, given that he, he missed some time at the end with that injury. But, yeah, I mean, I, I just don't feel like this offense needed to do as much as, as we typically see. You know, it was during the end of the regular season where they absolutely – blew up the Dolphins where they blew up the Broncos. So I just feel like they didn't need to do that much. And with the little that they did, they still had Diggs put up eight receptions, 106 yards and a touchdown. So, I mean, that just shows what kind of offense they could be when they really put it all out there. Yeah, for sure. John, are you worried at all about Buffalo's offense or no? I wouldn't say so. I'd say it's just a blip on the radar. I think they'll get back to their um, the form they've been in late in the season next week and hopefully secure a win. For sure, for sure. And moving on to the, the second AFC game, we're going to stick in the AFC first. Um, Mahomes was doing Mahomes-like things, and then he got hurt. Um, when healthy, is there anyone on earth who can stop Patrick Mahomes in that offense? John? Oh, um, when they're playing at their best, no, but the problem is I don't think they've shown their best all season. They've had very close games against inferior opponents late down the stretch. I think they had a streak of like seven wins in a row or something by one score against teams like the Panthers and Broncos and stuff. But when they're at their best, they can't be stopped. <laughs> yeah, Sam, what, about, what do you think? Is there anyone that can stop them when they're fully healthy and fully clicking? Uh, it's, it's really hard to say. Yes. I don't, I don't even think there is a team that can stop them. I think the only defense that had a chance to stop that high powered offense was the saints and they got knocked off last night. So other than that, I mean, I don't know when you're talking about this matchup against the bills. It's tough. The, the bills need to have the same type of defensive game, most likely better than what they had against the Ravens to be able to stop this, this chiefs offense. I mean, they're just, they're hard to beat. You know, they are absolutely insane. But we saw Mahomes go down, and we don't know. I, I assume he'll be able to play, but we don't know what um, his concussion protocol is going to look like. 
Chad Henney came in. He nearly ruined the day, and then he saved it. Um, just talk, uh, Sam. Just talk about what you saw out of him and the Chiefs team after Mahomes went down, and they still won. Uh, I just think it shows what type of head coach Andy Reid is, and, and and what type of guy you know he is to be able to to get everybody in that quarterback room prepared to just go in there and do what they need to do. I mean, it, you know, they he had he had that one mistake early on, Chad Henney, but it just showed that he. Other than that, he really didn't miss a beat. And Andy Reid put him in the right position to just make those plays and just just throw the ball quick into his playmaker's hands, Hill, Kelsey, and just, yeah, I mean, that, that run at the end, even though he didn't get the first down, that run at the end just showed, like, you know, what, what kind of team they really are. Yeah, no, for sure. That run on third and I think it was 14 was was absolutely insane. Um, John, what what did you see out of the Chiefs team once Mahomes went down? Um, I really like the way that Andy Reid sort of embraced it to make that play call on fourth and inches with the game on the line, that takes guts. And he bounced back from that interception, kind of an arm punt he threw um, very well. And I won't, but they definitely need no homes back next week if they want to win. Yeah, no, that, that fourth down call, I did not think they were going to snap the ball at all. And then once they did, Tyreek Hill was wide open in the flat. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys for two predictions for this game. I'm going to ask you a with Mahomes prediction and a without Mahomes prediction. Uh, Sam, we're going to start with you. With Mahomes, what's your prediction? Uh, with Mahomes, uh, with Mahomes, I see the Chiefs winning, but I see it being very close. I could actually see that game going into OT with Mahomes. And I just feel like this Bills offense can really do – they could expose this Chiefs defense hard. Without Mahomes – uh, I'd have to go Bills, and they wouldn't take it into OT at all. I, I think it'd be maybe a 7, 10-point win by the Bills. So, yeah, that's just how I see it. John, what about you? What's your prediction with and without – with with or without Mahomes? I'm going to be – I'm going to be bold and say Bills either way. I've been very high wow. on them the entire second half of the season. They've shown me nothing that could um, change my mind on that, and I have them going to the Super Bowl. Interesting. Yeah, um, I would have to say with Mahomes, I think the Chiefs win. Uh, without Mahomes, I think the Bills win. I just think that Chiefs team is too good with him. But uh, it would be cool to see Gabe Davis, UCF's own in the Super Bowl. That'd be a lot of fun. But uh, moving over to the NFC side, as Stephen A. Smith would say, Aaron Rodgers continues to be a bad man. Um, what were your takeaways from the Packers in that game? I mean, they look great. They won 32-18. Uh, Sam, we'll start with you. Uh, I just think it shows that that that, that Rogers Devonte Adams duo is just they're they're just too dominant at this point really they're they're just connecting on all cylinders they know how to expose a team really uh, it's just it's hard really and that defense has just been getting better and better each week uh, early in the season we we just thought that this defense wasn't gonna be able to uphold any sort of you know great gameplay but you know as the weeks have gone on and as they've you know, played this one game in the playoffs. I mean, they, they show that they've become a better defense throughout the year. For sure. And, John, how about LaFleur? I mean, at the start of last season, uh, they there was rumors that him and Rodgers weren't getting along, and now he's gone to two straight NFC Championship games as a head coach. Yeah, I think she, he should at least get some consideration for Coach of the Year. This team missed the playoffs both, both two years before he came in after Mike McCarthy was fired, and he's brought them – 13 and three seasons in both and NFC championship appearances in both. Yeah, no, he's, he's been really impressive as a head coach. I did not think he would uh, have as much success as he had, uh, but how about the Packers defense? I mean, they shut down the Rams offense, nearly holding them to half uh, the yardage that the Green Bay offense put up. What, what, what did you see in that Green Bay defense, Sean? Well, obviously Jared Goff was playing injured and that had something to do with it, but I think Green Bay did a good job of shutting down all his weapons. Um, Cam Akers didn't make any noise. Jared Goff threw for under 200 yards and their leading receiver only had 65. So they sh stepped up when it mattered most. For sure. Sam, what did you see in the Packers defense? Yeah, just essentially the same things really. I mean, like you said, Goff held under 200 yards. I mean, he did have an injury. With that thumb, I think regardless with or without that injury, it, there's there's not much more that he's doing. You know, he might he might throw for 250 at that, but yeah, held them to under 200, under under 100 rushing yards. They just they weren't able to get any sort of spark and build up 
drives upon drives where they're scoring on back-to-back drives and stuff like that. So it was just, yeah, really difficult for this Rams team to really do anything for that matter. Yeah, no, for sure. Moving on to the second game of the NFC uh, divisional round. Uh, Drew Brees played his last game and he kind of went out sad. Uh, Did you expect this kind of performance out of him and the Saints really, uh, John? Honestly, no, I didn't. The Saints had dominated the Bucs all year. And I know the saying that it's hard to beat a team three times, but I wasn't expecting the Bucs to win this game and to come out and play on defense the way they did, especially Devin White, who was all over the field, was truly incredible. <laughs> yeah, Sam, did, did you expect what happened last night? Because I know I didn't. No, I didn't at all. You know, I, I know that that Breeze thrives on on getting that that week's rest and coming into this game. I I did not expect him to have three sloppy turnovers and just that that last one really cost them the game. And it was just yeah, not what I was expecting at all. Like John said, it, it's hard for a team to beat another team three times in a season. You know, I came into this game thinking that the Bucks were going to win because of that, but I did not expect this sort of this gameplay from Breeze. And if it is his last game, that's quite an unfortunate way to go out. And we, we saw the Bucks and the Packers play earlier this season in Tampa. The Bucs won in a, in a landslide. And at times now, this Bucks offense does look unstoppable. What do they need to do in Green Bay, John, to get the win over the Packers? Well, they need to score touchdowns on their own drive. The only touchdowns they scored came off of Saints turnovers, one of which was on the three-yard line. And the rest of their drives, they only scored field goals or punted. So they're going to need to fix that and move the ball against a good Packers defense if they want to win, because Rodgers will not turn it over. And Sam, what do the Packers need to do to get over the hill uh, against Tampa? Um, they need to avoid what they did the last one they played. I mean, it was it was when they played early on in the season. Rodgers had back-to-back interceptions uh, in that game, and that that just can't happen at all because we saw what happens when the when uh, the Bucks create turnovers and what their offense can do with that. So I just feel like. Aaron Rodgers needs to avoid, you know, throwing interceptions and just making bad mistakes. And yeah, I mean, this could be a really great game next week. You know, it should be, it should be a great one. John, I'm going to start with you. What's your prediction for this game? Well, if the Homer side of me is speaking, I'm going to say the Bucks. but the more reasonable thing, I think the Packers are going to win. They've shown to be the best offense in the latter half of the season in the NFC. And I think Matt LaFleur is a good enough head coach to figure out what Tampa Bay did last time and avoid the mistakes. Sam, what about you? Who, who do you got? Who's going to the Super Bowl? Uh, this is tough. I mean, for the Bucs have the opportunity to play, they'd be the first team to ever play the Super Bowl in their own home stadium. I mean, that, that's got to give them some sort of fuel and energy. But with the Bucs, I feel like if they could um, – if they could provide Antonio Brown to have a huge game, I mean, a huge game, I think he's the key for this Bucks offense to really like put them over the edge against this Packers team. I think they could win it. But if, if he just has, you know, a typical game like he's had uh, all year, I, I see the Packers going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I see the Packers winning too. I'm going to go like 28, 24. It's, it should be a great game. Definitely. But I want to thank you guys for joining me. We had a great time. Um, and stay with us. We're going to come back with NBA Talk next. Good morning, fellas, except for Andre. KG in the building. James Harden is a step back. Yeah, that is not right. You're right. He's the best score. He has 120 straight points now. Bro, 120 straight points now. He has a back. So, all right. Let's do this. Let's, let's get down to business, guys. He's like, he's like, so he's still got Aaron Gordon, PJ Tucker, and the yeah. boys. Come on, man. What about the yeah, players? Yeah, so, what about the players? You want to go to the squad? Oh, this is probably going to make Tom Brady is the son. Facts. I think it's kind of special, though. What? What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the second segment of today's show. We're going to talk some NBA with Cliff and Tyler. Cliff, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking, Tyler. How are you? Great day. Great day. Good NFL weekend and uh, ready to talk some NBA. For sure. I, I want to get started with the Biggest news in the NBA uh, this off, or this week. James Harden is a Brooklyn net. Um, it kind of happened pretty quickly. Uh, 
Cliff, what does this mean for the rest of the Eastern Conference and I guess the NBA as a whole? Well, what this means for the Eastern Conference is that the Nets are the team to beat right now in terms of the star power. You got James Harden, arguably one of the greatest players in last season, along with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. And the, they're the team to beat. How they're going to work well together, it remains to be seen. We've seen what James Harden and Kevin Durant can do. But now I think Kyrie Irving is right is scheduled to be playing today against the, against the Bucks. So I'm really interested to see on how those three will work together. And uh, again, that is a team to beat right now with all that star power. For sure. Uh, Tyler, what, what do you think? What does this mean for the East? What does this mean for the NBA? I think for the East, I mean, this is a huge, huge trade, obviously, and it throws things around in the NBA. I still think that the East is up for grabs, honestly. Um, with the trade itself, you know, I, it's tough to pick a winner. I, the easy thing to say is the Nets. Um, you get you get two of the um, the scoring champions from the last couple of years together playing on the same team. Like Cliff said, we're excited to see like how that's kind of work, what the status is going to be with Kyrie, if he ever gets back onto the court and uh, gets his head straight and committed to the team. That will be remain to see. But, I mean, as far as like the Rockets coming, getting all those picks in, um, you know, we can think back because some people will say, oh, no, like that's they just gave up everything, but they have picks. I can think back to a particular uh, trade involving the Nets and a lot of picks back in 2013 or 14 with the Celtics. Look at that, uh, how that did with them getting the first round in 14, 16 and 18, getting smart JB and Jason Tatum. So I think that overall, it's a pretty well-rounded trade, um, obviously with Karis LeVert. Uh, not passing his physical, that's uh, upsetting. It looks like he'll be sidelined for a little bit, but he'll be back out on the court um, in due time. So overall, I think everyone kind of benefits a little bit, and I don't think it was a bad trade for anyone. I will say that I, one of the, go, one go of the ahead, things that, that they will definitely struggle with is the defensive capabilities around the rim. I mean, they lost Jared Allen, and they only have DeAndre Jordan. And we all know that although Steve Nash is the head coach, Mike D'Antoni is right there, and he loves the small ball. And as much as offensive power that they're going to get, they need to work on some defensive ends as well with that. Yeah, no, for sure. And like Tyler was saying, it's kind of a well-rounded trade. But I, for one, think that Brooklyn lost this deal. Uh, since they moved to Brooklyn, they will have only one of their own first picks uh, from the time they moved to Brooklyn to 2027. And that one pick was Jared Allen, who they just traded. So uh, this to me kind of feels like that Boston trade 2.0, where if this doesn't work out, it's going to look really, really bad. Um, but as currently constructed, Cliff, do you think this team can win the finals? They have the potential. I mean, again, they have a lot of offensive power. And in this game today, it's all about offense, as much as it pains me to say it. Um, again, it's championship or bust with that amount of star power with James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant. What the problem is, aside from defensively, is how are they going to manage it? Like, we all know what KD can do. With, he, he played with Steph Curry. He played with Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, Westbrook, and Harden back in OKC. They, he knows how to move off the ball. It's just Kyrie Irving and James Harden. Who is going to be the primary ball handler? Who is going to be the one trying to you know, be the jump shooter of, among those two? I mean, it's going to be fun to watch. That, that, that is the case. It's going to be fun. It's going to be entertaining. But my opinion, this team is championship robust. They have to win the championship for this run to make it successful, especially Harden. Yeah, Tyler, what do you think? Is it championship robust? I think so. I mean, with Kyrie Irving being how he like how he's been the last couple of years with the um, lack of chemistry and kind of out in the media, like doing just doing things that he's not just playing the game. Um, he's a great player, give or take whatever is going on. Uh, the Zen guy, the, the world is flat, whatever it is, Kyrie Irving is a great player. And so I think that they will figure it out. Um, as we saw versus the Magic, James Harden can dish out the ball, like he, and he's been doing it for years. Obviously, that'll change a little bit when Kyrie comes back. But yeah, I mean, it's next uh, this year, maybe next year. They got to have it. All these players can opt out into free agency in the, in the trio in, uh, in 22. So, I mean, it's, it's got to happen now for sure. I do think they're a championship caliber team. I don't think they win the championship this year. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I don't know if it's me being a biased Knicks fan, but I don't believe in them at all. <laughs> it's okay. Um, the Knicks will become better, man. We'll, we'll, hey, we're, hey. we're ready for it. We're ready for it. They have a young we're, talent over there. 
we we finally have a future. Like there's there's hope now with the Knicks. In the past, it was like we're paying a bunch of old players who are never going to be in the league five years down the road. But hey, we got a young core now. But um, kind of speaking on championships right now, Tyler, who is your team to beat in the NBA? I think you know, it's it, I kind of was going back and forth between a couple different teams. Overall, though, I think it's the Lakers. I think out west, they it, the East is up for grabs in a sense. You know, you had the Bucks, you got the Celtics, you got the Nets, um, you got the Sixers with Joel Embiid, who's playing out of his mind like an MVP right now. Um, so I think the East is up for grabs. That's why I don't want to go with an Eastern Conference team. I think the Lakers have the West on lock. I think that the Clippers, they'll give them a good series in the Western Conference Finals in the playoffs, but I don't see any major surprises happening out West. I think that the Lakers take it. So I would say that they are the team to beat with the status of the East and kind of, I could see any of those four teams that I mentioned making it to the championship. So I'm going to have to go with the Lakers as the team to beat. Cliff, what about you? Who's the team I have to agree with Tyler. It's got to be the Lakers. I mean, the record is what, 10 and three right now? That's the best in the West and best in the entire NBA. They have LeBron James, who is still somehow playing at that level at age 36. They have AD, those two form one of the most dynamic duos in this current league right now. And although they have struggled a bit defensively, that's because you know we, they lost what Howard as the anchor and JaVale McGee and all those other boys, they have gotten a lot of offensive power. They got Dennis Schroeder, they got a good, a, a good replacement in Montres Harrell in terms of defensive rebounding, as well as Marc Gasol, who provides more offensive, you know, touches and those like fancy no-look passes and all that. So definitely that team is a team to beat. And again, I agree with Tyler. They'll give, the Clippers will give the Lakers a run. They look like they've gotten a lot better, but I just don't see, honestly, anyone beating LeBron James and a well-rounded team such as that in seven games. It just, it just looks impossible, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. I definitely also agree with both of you. That's the Lakers. It's hard. I want to believe in the Clippers, but it's so hard uh, considering how hard they fell off in, in the bubble last year. Um, but kind of moving on to a different type of award. Uh, if the season ended right now, who would be your rookie of the year? Cliff, we'll start with you. Um, right now, it would have to be LaMelo Ball. And uh, yeah, I'm probably getting a lot of hate for it because he's a ball and all that. But honestly, if you look at the stats, I mean, what, he's either ranked first or second in total in total points, rebounds, assists. Like, that's, that's speaking a lot for someone that's coming off the bench. And I think personally, it's beneficial for him to start off on the bench because now he's getting, he, can, he can, like, lead that second unit and get a feel of what the NBA landscape will be like. So when he does get into in the starting role, it'll be much easier for him. I would also argue that Tyrese Halburn can also be in consideration considering he, he fell in what number 12 in the draft. And he's playing like, in my opinion, like a mini uh, Lamella ball. He can play off the ball. He can play like, like as a primary ball handler. But at this point, as of right now, just give me Lamella ball as rookie of the year, just, just on like the total amount of points, rebounds, assists, how he's playing. And of course he's a box office market. That's always a plus for any market team out there in the NBA. Tyler, what about you? Who's your rookie of the year? I think it's tough to lock one down right now, but I'm really high on James Wiseman. Um, with with Lamelo, uh, like let's say, coming off the bench right now, he's kind of getting his uh, his feet wet in the NBA, kind of figuring it out. Um, stud is going to be probably one of the uh, top three player out of this draft class. Um, but with Wiseman, uh, you saw the Warriors kind of struggle a little bit early, and they're they're still not winning. They may might be losing some games that they should be winning. But as far as making an impact on a good team, I think that James Wiseman is the perfect fit for them. And I think that he is going to, right now he's averaging uh, 11 and seven. I think that's going to go up. I, I feel that he'll finish above kind of like that 13 and eight mark. Like it's going to improve a little bit. Um, unless LaMelo just completely takes over at some point in the season, I'm going to go with James Wiseman. Nice. I, I, I would have to go with LaMelo right now just because, He's leading all rookies in almost everything, and he's coming off the bench. That's really impressive. I did not expect him to be a solid NBA player. I kind of expect him to be a bust coming into the league. But moving on to the darker side of basketball, um, we've seen a lot of COVID postponement, uh, postponements so far this season. Um, and I think we can chalk that up to you know being outside of the bubble. Uh, do you think the NBA will be able to finish their season, Tyler, or is it going to have to be cut short again? 
Oh, yeah, no, I definitely think they'll finish. And it, it, not saying that it's going to be a perfect, clean season. That's just – you just can't expect that right now. Um, I think by the time – I definitely think we'll get through the regular season. When it comes down to the playoffs, who knows where the vaccine will be at, at that point. Maybe the NBA, all the NBA players will already have it. Even if not, I think they finish the season. Um, like we've seen – we've seen NFL get through the season with – uh, bumpy roads, but we're getting great playoff football this last weekend. And so I think the NBA follows that kind of track and um, yeah, we'll, we'll have an NBA playoffs and I don't think there will be any major, major cancellations in regards to the season. The game are here, maybe um, probably, but nothing to cancel the whole season. Cliff, what about you? Is it time to hit the panic button if you're the NBA or wait it out? Um, I think I agree with Tyler. I think the NBA just needs to weigh it out and play as it is. Like we've seen like, before like the nfl they've they've gone through it so why not the nba and also when it comes to COVID 19 like it's up to all it's, a, it's like the player's responsibility like it's their job to keep themselves safe i mean like we all play a part in this entire role and keeping the league running and going so i truly think that the league will of course they will try their they'll, they will make it sure the season goes through and when it comes to the playoffs i mean who knows they could they could probably do the same thing too if the if the if it's still going on they could do the bubble and here in orlando but uh, I, I can't see the NBA season being cut short, especially when, you know, apparently the world needs sports in terms of like all of what's going on right now. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't want it to see. Uh, I don't want to see it get canceled. I don't think it will. But I definitely agree. We'll have a cancellation every now and then. Um, I want to thank you guys for joining me. We had a great, great, great segment. Um, and stay tuned. We'll be back for one more thing. All right. See you guys. I'm in charge of the meeting this week. So you know what we're going to talk about? Basketball. I like it. The second thing we're going to talk about this week is basketball. Nice. OK? And the third and last thing we're going to talk about is basketball. No. Oh, so, oh, yeah. God, yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I'll quit. I'll quit. <laughs> Take that. Look at the screen. talking about this week? Basketball. Welcome back, everyone. We had a great show. Thank you guys for tuning in. But before we go, I want to rant to you about the Nets. I need everyone to pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. They're not New York's team. They have not been New York's team. They will never be New York's team. New York's, the Knicks could go 0-82 and get the 14th pick in the lottery and they will still be New York's basketball team. I don't care what anyone says. And, and as currently constructed, this Nets team will not win a championship. There will be a second round exit. You have the three biggest drama queens on one team. It's just not going to work. You got three ball dominant players. I mean, okay, KD can play off the ball, yes, but Kyrie and Harden can't, and they won't. Um, and Kyrie goes AWOL every now and then. Like he's, he won't be there. This team's overrated. They won't play defense. They're not going to be good. Um, and yeah, no, the Knicks, yes, the Knicks are bad. And I, I'm a Knicks fan. Trust me, I know. They're very bad, but they have a future. And New York cares more about the Knicks than they do the Nets. And that's how it will always be. That's how it always was. The Nets are New Jersey's team. They will always be New, New Jersey's team. They don't care about them up there. They never will. The Nets aren't fun. Like, no one cares about them. They're, they're the little brother that you just forget is there. You know, they, they will just always be that little brother. They could win. They could win 10 straight championships. New York will not care about them and they never will. So let's pump the brakes on the nets. They won't be good. They won't be New York's team. They will never be New York's team. And yeah, and we got, we'll see you guys next week. We got a great line. We got a great, great lineup this week. Um, so stay tuned, stay with us. Really and I'll see you guys again next week. Bye. Chance, man, you know what's the deal. Yeah. Trying to find a kid, I'm in a field doing drills. What? Boy, you just a sucker, you ain't never keep it real. No. Three rings in my hand, I'm a warrior to the max. Wow. When I hang it up, they gon' have to give me plaques. Wow. Step up in the building and I only bring the facts. Yeah. When I make a highlight, they gon' replay, run it back. Okay, yeah. always locked in.